Borns Pro Audio Video Part 3. <laughs> Hi, this is Jim Lawson for Borns Pro Audio. Welcome to Part 3 of our series on standard versus high-end guitar potentiometers. I'm here again today with guitar potentiometer guru Chuck Manzano. So this, this being the pot that we would find in most guitars and, and the, the ones I've opened, um, I always notice a, a, a solder connection here, which is usually connected to ground. So how do we do that with a potentiometer that appears to be plastic on the back? And then even this one, though it has a metal back, it, it's plastic body. So how do we get, how do we get ground connected? To it? it must be something to do with this solder lock. That's a good question. So if you take a look at it, at the standard pot, the rear cover is where the, one of the solder lugs or a wire is soldered to the rear cover. Well, the rear cover is also connected to the bushing via these tabs on the sides. And so, in essence, you're, you're actually grounding the bushing shaft area to the can in the, in the rear cover. On Model 95s and Model 82s, we provide a solder lug to ground the bushing and shaft. There is, there is no can in the rear cover, uh, no metal sides that, that you can ground to. And so you ground the pot through, uh, through this uh, solder tab, same on, on the Model 82. Um, the rear cover is not to be soldered, it's nickel plated so you can't solder to it. Uh, so you really need to take the tab and, and ground that and that in essence will ground the, the shaft in the bushing area. So, so Chuck, then the solder tab um, allows the uh, bushing to be grounded. So what if we had a, uh, a mounting surface for the pot that was metal in the first place? Would, would this be necessary then, so long as the metal part was grounded in another way? Well, that's a good observation. Uh, on the metal covers, uh, w once the cover is grounded, in essence, the, the shaft and bushing area will be grounded. So you really don't need a, to put any kind of a, a ground lug there. For example, this pick guard is provided with a conductive shield and so the potentiometers once they're mounted on here they're essentially grounded from the bushing to the shield as well as the uh, the selector switch so what we would need to do here is to find a way to ground uh, the uh, the conductive shield to the rest of the guitar uh, and and or run all of the uh, the ground connections to the various points such as the tailpiece and um, and out to the output jack. So the point is that the, the bushing area or the threaded area um, where we secure the potentiometer into the guitar must be in the ground loop somewhere. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Great. So, so in essence you, you would really only use this if you were putting it through a wood body of a guitar um, that doesn't have any type of grounding on the inside mm -hmm. of the cavity. Another important item that I'd like to cover is excessive heat on the elements. A lot of guitars when they change out their pots have a tendency to apply the soldering iron to the solder lugs for an extended period of time and with a phenolic element uh, you'll get a loosening of the swage joints whereas the ceramic element is much more forgiving and it, it can absorb a lot of heat we, we have uh, our terminals are swaged onto the element and the excessive heat won't loosen these these uh, joints here mm -hmm. okay okay well, that's great. Uh, thanks so much for uh, talking to me today. No problem, Jerry. And this is Jim Lawson from <laughs> Jim Lawson from <laughs> Borns Pro Audio. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Jim Lawson for Borns Pro Audio. If uh, if you'd like a data sheet on any of these models, uh, they're available at www.borns.com forward slash pro audio. And this is a wishing you happy playing. Play longer, play louder, play harder. Warren's Model 82 Vintage Guitar Pots.